it's Attorney Amian April Alcazar for Triple A Live. So for today, we are being joined by the Director for Regional Centers and Online Programs of the University of Tennessee in Martin, Tennessee, USA, Miss Erica Bell. So maybe you'd like to give some greetings to our viewers who are students, parents, faculty, administrators, and other stakeholders of the education um, sector in the Philippines and around the world. Welcome. Um, as April mentioned, my name is Erica Bell and I'm Director of Regional Centers and Online Programs here at the University of Tennessee at Martin. I've been in this role for 20 years now. Um, I'm very passionate about higher education and I thank you for coming together and joining us this evening. I'm looking forward to spending some time with you. Yeah, so we're looking forward to a fruitful discussion for today, Erica. So I think we'll have to begin uh, with um, your background. As you've mentioned, you've been in this role for a long time, it seems, but I'm sure that you will remember how and when did you actually develop your interest in the field of study that you eventually took when you were in university as a young person? Well, I was actually a transfer student myself. I transferred to UT Martin from a small community college in Northern Illinois. Mm -hmm. And I was a first generation college student. Mm -hmm. So when I began my um, position here in this department, I came in as a grant specialist. Yes. We were heavily grant funded. And mm -hmm. my, my love for this program, my love for the students, um, for bringing access to higher education to the students, to the local communities, um, grew daily. And that's pretty much why I've never left. Um, mm -hmm. I, I have many different perspectives that I lead with. I'm an alumni. Um, mm -hmm. I am a first generation college student. I'm a parent of two college students. Um, and, so, and, I, and I'm a service and adjunct instructor as well. Mm -hmm. So I try to always keep each of those perspectives in my mind within my decisions that I make daily. Um, to ensure that we are looking from all different perspectives as to how best we can meet those communities and our students' needs. Yeah, so you've talked about several activities and several functions that you have been uh, doing in your particular responsibility. So what do you think were the experiential learnings that you actually undertook in order to develop the skills, competencies, and proficiencies that you now actually exhibit in your particular role in the university? I think it actually came with just the development of programs from the ground up. Began, mm -hmm. began with the concept um, listening to community needs and wants, mm -hmm. you know, looking at it from all sides, and is this possible? If not, how can we do this differently? Um, and just really trying to address what the ultimate goal was. Mm -hmm. um, and then also keeping in mind um, continual evaluation of the program. Yes. Um, it's, it's feet on the ground. It's, mm -hmm. you know, not just the development of the idea, but how can we best uh, be successful and produce this? Yes. So specifically, you mentioned about your own personal experiences of having been a transfer student for community colleges and now being the director for the regional center. So can you describe a little bit what would be the mission of the regional centers in relation to the whole vision or mandate of the University of Tennessee Martin? Vision is to bring access to bring UT Martin to those communities, to those students. There's a reason our students go to the regional centers, yes. um, whether it's financial, whether it's they don't have the transportation, they do not have the childcare to leave home. Um, they're caring for elderly parents. Um, they There's a reason that they need those local centers. And so we bring that education, we bring the high quality faculty, we bring UT Martin experience to them. Um, it also allows us to partner with non-degree programming, you know, to offer non-credit non um, offerings from Kid College to phlebotomy technology, technology classes so that the local community members can test to become, you know, a phlebotomist in the local hospital and healthcare environment. 
Um, can you also um, describe for us the relationship between the university and other post-secondary institutions such as community colleges, as well as colleges of applied technology and specifically in the state of Tennessee? So what particular collaborations do you actually do with these other uh, institutions? So I think you mentioned the key word, April, it's collaboration, it's not yes. competition. Yes. Um, we have to work together because ultimately we're all here to serve our students. Yes. Um, you know that you traveled with me to TCAT Crum, where yes. we toured and we recently um, developed an articulation agreement with TCAT Crum yes. so that students that come out of their program can actually receive up to 30 credit hours here at UT Martin as a transfer student. Again, it's thinking outside the box. That was something that we had not done before. Yes, um, very innovative. Yes, yes, yes. Um, innovative. It took time, mm -hmm. um, but again, keeping the students' needs in mind, um, and and also keeping in mind that most of our students will remain in their local communities. Yes. So, what is the need for progress of those communities? Also. So, and right now, because of the situation also that we have all found ourselves worldwide because of the pandemic, um, how then did you eventually develop the online programs to become much more responsive and relevant? I'm certain that you had started it years before, but right now there's an acute sense and immediacy to making the online programs relevant and responsive to the community's needs. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we began years ago with just a few course of interest. We had some faculty that were interested in trying it out, um, you know, taking a test drive, if you will, that yes. developed from a smattering to, to a, a small group. Um, and then the pandemic hit. And I think we all knew that we still needed to continue to meet our students' needs where they were. Um, and so that meant bringing education to them and online was the best platform to do so. Mm -hmm. I think it has been enlightening for some of our faculty members and staff that online education is possible. Students can be successful. Is it for everybody? No, but there are students that have excelled in this online format um, because we're bringing it right to their door. Mm -hmm. So um, what do you think would be like a strategic plan for the University of Tennessee Martin in terms of the development um, of regional centers as well as online programs in the next five years? I think taking a real strong look at the degree offerings that we have and can those offerings lead to degree progression. It's, it's not enough just to throw courses out there. We need to ensure that that's leading us somewhere. Um, as for the regional centers, I think taking a look at the local needs and are we offering the correct programs and the and offering the the correct degrees that our students in those communities need for growth and if not how can we do so is it possible um, many of our programs at the regional centers involve collaboration where they have courses they take on site at the regional center but they also take some of our online courses to ensure that degree progression so just really taking a look at what are the needs. Each center is different. The needs are going to be different. Therefore, maybe the degree offerings need to be different. So you talk about the needs of your students, your students and the communities, right? So how then will you relate that now to the initiatives in the state of Tennessee, which is the Drive to 55 initiative of the uh, state government and also the provision for the so-called Tennessee Promise or, and even the UT Promise? So due to the pandemic, each of our centers have local higher education boards. We were not able to meet. Um, personally, we are kicking those back off to meet individually with each of our higher ed advisory board members. And I mentioned to one of our directors yesterday that we are all in this together mm -hmm. to, to kind of get us out of this um, valley that we've kind of hit due to the pandemic. It's going to have to be a team effort. It cannot just be UT Martin faculty and staff. It's going to have to be our local community members. It's going to have to be collaborating with our, our K-12 um, 
staff and educators and administration. It's going to be collaborating with our local two-year institutions and our TCATs. Mm -hmm. um, how can we all come together to serve these students? Um, we know that financially times are hard and we need to keep that also in the back of our mind, but we also need to ensure that we're providing high quality education. So we talked about access and equity, um, especially for um, students, right? And, and one of the innovative programs in the state of Tennessee will be the governor's school and UTM is the site of two of those uh, vital governor's school, one in agriculture and another one um, in the humanities. So how then do you see the relationship um, for working with the feeder schools around the state of Tennessee to ensure that you are um, receiving the kind of prospective students that the UTM would like to actually uh, educate? Mm -hmm. I think um, because we have high quality programs, for instance, in ag, I think UT Martin's name is known as the ag school. Um, we have a phenomenal chancellor, Chancellor Carver's great about communicating across the state with stakeholders and with prospective students and with he's great with working with faculty and staff here on campus. Um, I, I think it's again listening to our K-12 partners. Mm -hmm. We have dual enrollment programs and we serve about 1400 students across the state. Again, collaborating with these schools, what, what are their course needs? listening to the students, what are your degree interests, trying to pair them up and trying to link a faculty member with a group of students that per se may be interested in computer science, then we need to bring our computer science faculty to them. Um, whether that's through our LMS platform canvas, whether that's, you know, connecting by Zoom such as we are, um, but really partnering with our faculty um, to increase awareness. And I think once students become aware of UT Martin, they fall in love. Yes, and that's um, a good and so thing. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Um, you know, we get them and then we keep them, we work with them because they become part of our family. So you, can you talk also about, you've mentioned about the advanced um, credits that um, high school students can take from UTM, but can you also discuss the models of dual admissions for those who are in the community colleges and also the reverse transfer mode of transfer to the University of Tennessee? So dual admission partnerships would be where a student begins with the two-year institution. And then once they have for example, 12 credit hours under their belt. They would then apply for UT Martin and have guaranteed admission. Uh, and then can flow, we can begin to work with that student and ensure that they have transferability of courses, um, that it's a seamless transfer, that they have a point of contact, um, and that communication line is developed early, that trust is developed early and then they can just flow right into that four-year institution. Um, along those lines, you may have some students that started a community college and then for whatever reason, decide they want to transfer to a four-year institution within the state. Mm -hmm. Once they've completed their degree with UT Martin, we absolutely encourage them to transfer, reverse transfer back to the local community college and obtain their two-year degree. And so, for instance, my wall has a two year, a four year and an MBA on it, um, in part because of collaboration, in part because I knew who to go to. And I think that's half the battle. Who is who is that point of person who can help me get to where I need to be? Yes. So you talked about it seems this um, activities seamless transitions and moving back and forth in terms of like the transfer pathways. Can you um, describe to us the kind of student services that the university is actually able to provide um, to the students so that they could be guided accordingly through their educational journey? Um, support services, you mean, April? Yes. Definitely. So for instance, at the regional centers, we have writing labs on site to help students. We have full-time English faculty that are there on site at the centers to ensure that we're providing that high touch need. 
and outreach. Um, we ensure that we have paired up with our disability services office here on campus. We have worked very closely with our student health and counseling services here on the main campus to ensure that our students that are at the centers or online can also have support if needed. Um, we have worked to pro provide the Skyhawk Healthy Hawk program, which promotes, um, yes, fitness and mental well being and physical well being bringing that to those students also at the regional centers. We just had a meeting about it yesterday. Um, you know, what can we do to keep our students engaged? Those students at the centers also need to feel like they are part of a UT Martin community. Um, I know that the chancellor is working to make visits at the beginning of the semester to each of the centers to kick off the return um, back to campus. And I think that will be instrumental in, in helping our students feel valued. And again, being reminded that they do matter. Um, so you've been doing a lot of the activities and dysfunctions to ensure um, student success and completion rate among the students. Yes. So how do you see all of these strengths of the university being stretched now to look at international collaboration? So we've started some initiatives um, to really have this possibility across the Asia Pacific region. So um, you've mentioned many activities and, and outreach and regional centers and online programs being very much at the forefront of what you are doing. So how do you think this will play out in the international uh, foray at the university? Mm -hmm. So again, collaboration. Um, you know, we met with you and we listened to what our partner institutions needs were, and, and how can we best meet that? Whether that's faculty training and development, um, whether that's providing some certificate programming, but listening to the needs and then thinking about where do we wanna be two years, five years out? Okay. What is the ultimate goal? What is the strategic plan for our partner institution? Um, I, I think we can all work together. It takes time. Um, and it takes strong collaboration and it takes time to say, no, maybe that's not the best path. Let's let's look about going around and going this way. Um, and and again, just listening, active listening um, and continual evaluation. So in all of these uh, career trajectory that you have taken and coming uh, full circle, um, Erica, so what do you think would be your advice for the young people out there um, in so far as the kind of skills and competencies that they should be developing in order to be involved in outreach programs and extending educational expertise um, for the institutions that they may eventually be uh, working with? Mm -hmm. um, again, active listening. Um, educate. <laughs> Education, continual education. I learn something every day. Um, just really um, trying to hone in on your communication skills, those soft skills, um, your writing skills. Um, I think it is hard sometimes for our, our students. I, feel, I think they feel a lot is, is on them and they are sometimes hesitant to ask for help but I think keeping, keeping it in their mind that we are here to help them. We're, you know, we're just an ask away and, and really keeping that line of communication open um, okay. so that they feel comfortable, they feel welcomed. Um, and then also, I think it's also mindful to, that we keep our students um, in contact with career planning and development services. What right. are the great, Yes, what are the career options for them? Um, and it's okay at 16 to not know what you want to, what you want to do when you become an adult. That's absolutely fine. Um, so then we work with them to ensure that they're capturing their gen ed requirements um, and, and promoting student success and an encouragement. Um, there's never been a better time now that we need to be focused on retention and academic success um, and, and academic readiness. Is a student really ready for this course? Yes. 
in the feeder school. So would you say also that the qualities of risk-taking and adventure and uh, being able to travel long distances are part of the qualities that you need to develop in educational age? <laughs> absolutely, April, absolutely. Yeah. With 10 long drives. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we have fun on those drives. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So I think um, we've really come a long way in so far as um, educational outreach is concerned, like really taking what is the best of um, the educational institution and bringing it forth to the communities where we find ourselves. So how then um, do you see the continuing role and responsibility that we will undertake um, for the university in terms of innovation, Erica? in the next um, five years for the year. Again, I think it's keeping in mind um, that the ultimate goal is that we grow our programs, that we can have expansions at the centers, um, that we can listen to the needs, we can adjust, um, acclimate, that we can continue to strengthen our partnerships. I see a huge collaboration um, with our two-year schools, our feeder schools, and our, our local TCATs. Um, I think that opportunity is going to grow and flourish. Um, Dr. Totten and I had a meeting scheduled with another TCAT yesterday. So again, I think it's it's time maybe to step outside the box to look at things maybe a, a bit different, what can be done. Um, but again, focused on what our students need. Um, if having workforce and, and career readiness is is a significant need right now, then how can UT Martin help to support that need? So with that, uh, we really uh, would like to thank you for your valuable time with all of those insights. I think um, the thrust, as you mentioned, is really um, the mandate of student success to put forward really the interest of uh, student-centeredness policies and programs in the university to ensure that we are going to be responsive to the needs of our um, stakeholders, mainly the students of the institution. Yeah, so would you like um, to give some few words again um, to our stakeholders in the education um, sector? And we look forward to future collaborations with you. Thank you, April. Um, as I close, I, I think it's wise to remember that as you develop programs and you begin to collaborate with um, local institutions, um, at home to keep in mind that you're always asking as you're seated at the table, how does this affect our regional center students? How does this affect our online students? Mm -hmm. So having a, a full circle, how does this affect all the sectors of your institution? Um, but I thank you for allowing me the opportunity to visit with you this evening and I wish you all the very best and um, a blessed week. Thank you so much, Erica, and we look forward to spending more time with you again. Thank you. Thank you.